What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Knives of the Round Table. My name is Marco and today I kind of have a, a unique one, a ridiculous one for you if you will. This is the Midgard's Messer, the Viking. Okay, and Midgard's Messer is a, it's a knife maker out of Germany and he the the picture of this knife started circulating in some of the knife community uh, pages that I follow and it kind of caught my eye right uh, you know anything that is that is different and unique uh, it catches my eye and this one caught my eye because it's kind of a ridiculous knife okay it's probably closer to a pocket axe or a shovel than it is a pocket knife uh, because it's just it's just the dimensions of it are insane I'll give you size comparisons here in a second so you know kind of what I'm talking about but let me kind of give you a tour of the knife what you have here is kind of a compound tanto blade with kind of a, a drop point uh, shape or I don't know if you want to call that a harpoon or a, or, or, a, or a finger swedge right there the Viking and Midgard's Messer uh, maker's mark and logo you have frag pattern on the titanium frame with blue anodized screws there were only 200 of these made and i'm kind of bummed out because there's a smaller version of this knife that i think would be really really cool to, cool to have uh but i missed it when 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 they issued it i i don't follow midgard's messer all that closely i do follow them i've i've liked some of their designs there's another one called the bomb Bore that i think looks really really cool but i just i just missed the the the, the little viking when it came out so uh limited limited number of these like i said it's a titanium frame lock it does have a lock bar insert and an oval travel stop. This is a, a CPM 3B blade. Uh, I, that's, I think that's what it is. Yeah, I, th I think that's what it is. And then you have a mill pocket clip that is huge. Okay, you have blue back spacer and this really nice thumb ramp that you that you can land on with a forward finger choil if you if you decide to do that. Now. Um, when I say that it's a ridiculously sized knife, this is what I mean, okay? That's against the ruler. So it's really pushing nine and a half to 10 inches long, over four inch blade, four and an eighth just about. But it's not just about the knife being long. I have knives that are about that length, you know? And I have knives that feel massive in the hand. You know, the Hoback Husky is, is, is one that comes to mind. But this one is kind of big in all dimensions. So this is the size comparison right here. So that's the pair of two, and that's the pair of three right here. So, I mean, the pair of two is a full-size knife, and it has a fairly generous handle, right? I, on, my, on my large hands, you know, I wear large gloves, and look at that. I mean, in the forward finger choil, I still have about an inch, right? Choked back, I still you know, have pretty good uh, amount of handle back here. In other words, you could be back here. But if you compare that to that, you know, the, the Viking also has a forward choil. Look at that. This is, it has almost a, a full inch more of handle and blade length and everything else. Now, the pair two is considered to be kind of larger in the pocket in that dimension. But let me show you what big in the pocket really means, okay? Can you tell? I don't know if you can tell. Let, 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 let me show you. The Viking is the one below. It's that big a thing right there. It's insane, okay? This is a really, really an insane knife. Now, that's against the Benchmade bug out and the Mini bug out, and that's a really bad size comparison, okay? Uh, you know, these, these the competition for these are really kind of met for uh, full-size Praetorians at some point I had a uh, met for Genesis and that looked tiny compared to, to to this knife I mean if you look at the size of the bug out in comparison uh, you know when it's folded it's just it's just ridiculous it's an insane knife I mean I have large hands and look at 
you know, if I choke up, I have, I don't know, what do you call that? Two inches, a full two inches behind my fingers? Yeah, two inches. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, but it's fun. And it was uh, a contender for the five knives that make me happy just because of how ridiculous it is. And it brings a smile to my face to have a, you know, a pocket sword, you know, in, in my hand uh, is just, it's just really, really cool. So let's dive into it. Even though it's a ridiculous knife, uh, I'm gonna do the full the full review on it. So stay tuned. Uh, ergonomics, ergonomics is is really nice. Uh, even a little big. I mean, I don't say that a lot. I mean, most of the times, my complaint is that a knife, you know, like this one, this appears in my hand and my fingers kind of touch the back of my hand, so I can't get like a like a like a nice grip. Right? I need. I need something that is a little taller, bigger. And this one is actually kind of the opposite, right? It's It might be a bit big, even on my large hand. So if you have large or extra large hands, this is the knife that you're looking for. You know, one of my viewers said, you know, that he's cursed with only being able to use four or plus uh, inch blades uh, because of the size of his hand. This is for you. This is what you should be getting. Uh, but the ergonomics are actually really nice. Uh, the, the knife guides you to where you want to be. It, it, it kind of, this is the position that the knife wants you to be. Uh, that's the most natural that comes to me. You can choke up. It's not as comfortable in this position, but you can if you want to do finer, finer tasks with a pocket sword. Uh, but it's, it's actually fairly, fairly comfortable in the hand. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit bad is that uh, on the inside, so there's a fair amount of gap in between. So your meat, the meat of your fingers kind of can go in here. The, it, you know, it doesn't bridge. And the inner edge right here, it's not sharp, but it's not rounded either. So, you know, so if, when you're gripping hard, you know, when you're gripping hard, then you're, you know, it's it's a little bit uncomfortable right there. Uh, now the clip is massive, so you do feel it in the hand. It, I, I wouldn't call it a hot spot per se. Maybe the back corner, this back uh, point right here, is a little bit uh, sharp, and you feel it in your hand, especially in a saber grip right here. Not so much in a hammer grip. Uh, but I I would say that the ergonomics are 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 decent to good. Uh, now, cutting performance. Well, <laughs> as you might imagine, this is not the sliciest knife in the world, right? I mean, if we talk about blade thickness and we compare that to the Benchmade bug out, right? Let me show you. Can you tell the difference? Yeah, yeah. So this is a very, 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 very thick blade comparing it with the Parrot 2. You can see. So it's a very thick blade. You're not gonna be slicing through anything. You can do shallow cuts with this thing. You can maybe, you know, uh, kind of chop down a tree maybe, but this is not a slicing knife. And it's not because it's not sharp. It's actually crazy sharp. The It's, it's one of the few knives that has come to my table that comes with a, with a, with a mirror edge. It comes with a mirror edge from their factory. Uh, it's not a perfect mirror, but it's a damn polished edge. Let me see if I can make it catch light right there. Can you tell it? Yeah, there, it's a mirror edge. So a really good job at sharpening it. And as you can tell when I cut that thing, uh, it's, it's incredibly sharp, it's just you can do shallow cuts with it, uh, you know, pushing through, through harder materials, you know, pushing through cardboard. It just you get to to a thickness that is that is just all of a sudden you're you're having to wedge uh, your way through the material. It's just not. Now, it can. I, I'm. I wouldn't be uh, scared of. I haven't pried with it, but I wouldn't be scared of doing it. I mean, this is a very thick blade stock. I mean, I don't have calipers right here with me, but we can just use an old fashioned ruler here. And you're looking at damn near a quarter of an inch 
inch of thickness and a tip that because of this tanto or you know compound grind it gets to a very thick point so prying with it i wouldn't be i wouldn't be surprised so it's not the best at cutting but you know <laughs> I, I i don't know it's it's like saying that an axe can't cut right this is this is i think this is meant for something else for for just being ridiculous it can cut and eh, but you can't really slice through i mean you try and cut an apple with this and you'll just put it cut you know, split an apple in half um now uh, fit and finish fit and finish is really really good uh you know the price on this thing was something like uh like three hundred dollars three hundred and fifty dollars and for the size of the knife and for the materials that you get uh it's 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 you know it's like two hundred dollars less maybe three hundred dollars less than a medford so i would say that this is much better value than a medford i've always said that i love medfords i own three or four of them but they're not great value right i think they're one of the poorest values out there but this one i would say it's a very very solid value for the size of the knife i mean regardless of what you might think a slab of titanium that's that big it costs more than a slab of titanium that is this big right this more this is more titanium than that the same with with the steel now and so they've 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 milled this pattern really really nicely again the thing that i wish on the fit and finish is that they chamfered or rounded better the inside edge of the of the scales uh, everything else is just really nice you get a really nice grip the back spacer is just beautiful finish there's 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 jimping here and and it just locks the knife in place the action the action look now it's not hard to do that with a blade that probably weighs six pounds or so um, but uh, and oh by the way it's on phosphor bronze washers okay this is on phosphor bronze washers and the only the only knock I would have in the fit and finish is that there's several washers in here so I usually when I see several washers it means that 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 their tolerances are not as tight and they have to kind of fit you know the the blade between more washers to kind of dial it in so there's 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 not only one washer on either side there's there's two washers on either side and different thicknesses so so that's what makes me think that you know they, they're they need to maybe dial in their their fit and finish uh, their precision uh, a little bit better but but i would say that for the price it's it's really well made it's very solid uh and i think it's uh, and i think it's i i think they did a good job i don't know i don't know if this is their first knife uh like i said it's i i don't follow them as closely uh but it's i think it's a solid example of of what they do now the action it's like i said it is very smooth but you have to deploy it with with the wrist just it's such a large blade and the detent is fairly weak uh so you have to deploy it with some wrist and it just and it's a very nice smooth control drop shot uh, I don't know if you can tell it's just very very smooth very slow really really nice it feels super premium but the detent's very weak look and I don't know if it's because the detent's weak I think it I think the detent is weak relative to the weight of the blade the blade is such a heavy blade that you know that it would take a tremendous amount of detent to keep it from deploying you know like that you know uh and i don't know that it would be make it a better knife uh you know because right now when i disengage the lock bar i don't feel like it's a weak lock bar i feel like it's a decent tension it's just such a heavy blade that uh that the, the detent relative to the weight of the blade is it feels weak but you know it makes it that that control drop shot action uh it's it, it's both a figure of the detent 
and the and the phosphor bronze washers. So this one's broken in really, really nicely. I I, I like the action. Uh, I I you do have to be careful because uh, the detent is is weak relative to the blade, uh, but the but the closing action is just really, really, really nice. So. Uh, finishing up here, uh, airing of grievances. I think I would like their their logo to be smaller. Okay, so you've got the Viking, and then you got their their maker's mark right here, and then you got their logo, and the logo is huge. I mean, you're looking at a logo that is three quarters of an inch or thereabouts. It looks very Versace, you know the you know the head with the Medusa. It it it, it kind of looks like that. It's huge. It's a little bit too much billboarding for my taste. Uh, you know, you got the maker's mark here. The number is huge in the back. So the billboarding is not something that I am a huge fan of. Uh, you got a little bit of a point right here uh, that's kind of a hot spot. And the inside edges of this are not rounded. So that's kind of, that. those are kind of my complaints and it's a little bit of a nitpick. I'm kind of nitp nitpicking, but overall, I th I'd say that it's a really nice knife, especially for the price, but it's a ridiculous knife, right? It's, it's a, a you know, you have to have really, really big hands to kind of, uh, to kind of say that this is uh, something that you, that you need, right? It's just, uh, it's just insane. So guys, uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. So this one's, uh, this one you have to find in the secondary market again. They're gone, they only made 200 of them. You can still find them on the secondary market. I've seen them come and go. Uh, but if you enjoyed it, if you liked it, then like and subscribe if you think I earned it. Uh, don't hit the notification bar. Nobody likes to receive notifications of any kind. You know where to find me if you like my content. Uh, come see me and until I see you again, take care.